Hello again everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund and I'm currently a graduate mechanical engineer on the Nuclear Graduates Programme. Today is Wednesday the 1st of November 2023 and I'm here to give you your future news update. On to the key headlines for today's episode. 1. CEO appointed to deliver UK prototype fusion energy plant. 2. New IAEA initiative to enhance fusion energy collaboration. 3. Helical Fusion selected for Japanese grant. 4. New Fusion Futures Programme gets £650 million injection. 5. General Fusion Triumph sign MOU to test LM26 Fusion Reactor Prototype. As usual, I have a couple of bonus stories that you definitely don't want to miss. 1. CEO appointed to deliver UK prototype fusion energy plant. Our first piece of fusion news today comes from the UK, where Paul Methven has been appointed as the first CEO of UK Industrial Fusion Solutions. For those of you that missed the Fusion News episode where I discussed this company, it was set up as a subsidiary of the UK AEA that will lead STEP, the prototype fusion plant that would be built in West Burton. The STEP program is at the heart of UK fusion strategy and will be key in paving the way for commercialization of fusion energy and driving economic growth. Paul joined the STEP program in September 2020 from the Ministry of Defence where he was Director of Submarine Acquisition at the Submarine Delivery Agency. Sir Ian Chapman, Group CEO of UKAEA, said, I'm delighted that in Paul Methven, we have secured a brilliant leader with a track record of working in complex major programmes that matter to the country and leading diverse teams in public-private partnerships. I'm excited to work with Paul and his team to deliver step and make fusion power a reality. Two. New IAEA initiative to enhance fusion energy collaboration. Our second piece of news that the first meeting of the World Fusion Energy Group will be convened next year was announced by the IAEA's Director General, Rafael Grossi, at the IAEA's 29th International Fusion Energy Conference. This is really exciting, as the group not only includes scientists and engineers, but policymakers, regulators, financiers, and people from both private and public areas of the fusion industry. With the eventual goal of commercialization in mind, this will allow enhanced collaboration and make sure that all stakeholders keep pace. At this meeting, the fusion key elements will be announced. These will include definitions, characteristics, and criteria. You may be thinking that many of these are already defined. However, there's currently no official criteria for many terms, which can cause variances worldwide. This will therefore help to develop a globally common understanding. This, in my opinion, is particularly important for those stakeholders that work adjacent to the industry that don't have a necessarily a scientific fusion background. Additionally, a new publication was also announced by the IAEA called the World Fusion Outlook. This publication is hoping to act as a comprehensive guide to track fusion's progression from concept to actualization and aspires to establish itself as the foremost global resource for credible updates on the latest advancements in fusion energy. So make sure you keep your eye out, as I'm sure any articles published will be definitely an interesting read. 3. Helical Fusion Selected for Japanese Grant Next up is an article from Nuclear Engineering International about Fusion Industry Association member Helical Fusion. Recently, they were selected by the Japanese Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports and Technology for its Small Business Innovation Research Programme, which was set up to promote R&D work for startups developing innovative technologies. They are one of four companies that were selected and will receive 2 billion yen from a total pot of 6.5 billion yen. This equates to roughly 30 million US dollars. Also selected was FIA member Kyoto Fusioneering and two supplier firms. Helical Fusion is a private fusion technology company developing accelerated design that spun out of the National Institute for Fusion Science. With them, they've been developing high temperature superconducting cable technology which is anticipated to support the development of commercially viable high-performance magnets. Specifically, they created a novel high-temperature superconducting conductor known as wind and impregnated stacked elastic, or WISE tapes. These tapes are designed to be scalable and utilized in the development of high-performance magnets. Due to their flexibility, they can be used to create HTS coils with much more complicated shapes while maintaining necessary properties and tolerances. The provided funding will expedite the commercialization of the WISE conductor by elevating its technology readiness level from level five to level seven. Four, 
New Fusion Futures programme gets £650 million injection. Next up, we have another Fusion news story from the IAEA Fusion Energy Conference, this time with the information coming from The Engineer. Alongside a new skills programme and fuel cycle facility, the £650 million Fusion Futures programme was unveiled by Nuclear Minister Andrew Bowie at the conference. The funding will additionally support research and development for fusion components, the growth of the Cullum campus operated by the UK Atomic Energy Authority, and establish a fusion industry programme aimed at bolstering the emerging private fusion sector within the UK. It's always great to hear when fusion gets another injection of funding. If you'd like to know more detail, a list of what areas the programme will fund can be found in the article in the link in the description below. 5. General Fusion Triumph Sign MOU to test LM26 fusion reactor prototype. Finally, our last piece of news today was published by General Fusion on Yahoo Finance to announce the Memorandum of Understanding that they signed with Canada's Particle Accelerator Centre, Triumph. As per the agreement's provisions, both organisations have committed to collaborating on the creation of diagnostic tools tailored to validate the operational efficiency of the company's demonstration prototype reactor for magnetised target fusion, referred to as the Lawson Machine 26, or LM26. Specifically, this will be in relation to neutron and ion temperature diagnostics to verify that LM26 achieves fusion conditions, but also inform the expenses and dimensions of General Fusion's demonstration of their commercial scale product, which is set to take place at the Cullum campus in the UK. In the future, General Fusion will also leverage Triumph's expertise in managing large-scale physics instruments to create interfaces that streamline the analysis and interpretation of data for LM26 operators. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. The first bonus is an article from Nuclear Engineering International about the state of California's recent recognition of fusion energy as a distinct energy source from nuclear fission. Governor Gavin Newsom of California has officially enacted Assembly Bill 1172, establishing California as the inaugural US state to acknowledge fusion energy as a unique and independent technology, separate from conventional nuclear fission. This is really exciting as fusion and fission require fundamentally distinct regulatory strategies, and this legislation is the first effort to account for these disparities. Next up, is the news again from Nuclear Engineering International to do with the construction that has started on the International Fusion Materials Irradiation Facility Demo-Oriented Neutron Source project in Granada, Spain. The facility will test materials for use in future fusion power reactors, with the main funding coming from Spain and Croatia. If you'd like to know more about the kinds of materials and testing that will be done within this facility once construction is completed, make sure you check out the link in the description. The next bonus is an article that comes from the Fusion Industry Association. It looks at the multinational regulatory framework recommendations for fusion that the UK, Japan and Canada published through Agile Nations, which is a non-binding intergovernmental network. There were five recommendations that are all summarised on the FIA page linked below. And if you'd like to know even more detail, there's a link on that page that you can follow. Last but not least is an article from IEEE Spectrum about five fusion technologies that I found particularly interesting. The article covers the concept from FIA members, TAE Technologies, Helion Energy, HB11, Marvel Fusion, and Princeton Fusion Systems. If there are any of these that you'd like to learn more about, definitely make sure to have a read. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment, or subscribe. And if you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.